Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Tort. I have done a pretty massive amount of mining since the end of the last episode. I cut it all out because honestly I don't think mining is very interesting to watch. Which is kind of funny because the name of the game is Minecraft, but mining is actually one of the least interesting things to watch in this game. It's kind of fun to do, but not very fun to watch. Anyway, I've gotten a massive amount of resources. And I've also created a rough sorting system. So this bottom chest is basically the everything else chest I've got. A bunch of redstone, lapis lazuli, gotten some diamonds, uh, some leather, I'm not sure exactly what else is new. Oh, uh, chimerite, that's definitely new. Just a bunch of things. Here I have all the ores that I collected. You can see I got a hell of a lot. Got a stack and a half of copper. And then here's just all the construction blocks, cobblestone and, and whatnot. And this one is food related stuff, food and seeds and trees and stuff like that, things that can be planted or eaten. So on my quest for the iron ore that can actually be ground up in the grindstone, I was incredibly not successful. I got tons of iron, but none, like almost none of the right type. I explored the mining dimension for probably, probably an hour, a half hour to an hour. And I didn't find a single piece of the iron ore that I need. What I need is, or is it? What I need is the goethite ore. This is the only one that can be ground up. So I didn't find any of this in the mining dimension. And then eventually I looked up goethite. I looked it up here and the ore actually has information on where it spawns in the world, this world gen tab. So it says it spawns in the overworld, which is this dimension from Y64 all the way down to the very bottom of the world. That's what it says, but I'm pretty sure that's a lie. Because I kept exploring around, even on the overworld, down below, and I found nothing. So what I ended up thinking is maybe it's just on the, like, maybe it's on the top of the world. Sure enough, it is. I found just 14 paltry pieces just by exploring the top of the world. So I just like ran around. Uh, you can't see it on the map because I'm too far down. Let me show you where I explored. I took a boat. I went all along the shore, all around here. Kind of just did a loop. Came all the way back to base. And there were random little pieces of goethite ore on the top of the world. But as you can see, I found 14 pieces in all of this. It's, I, I don't know, am I just really unlucky or something? I don't get it. So I don't have much, but I have something. Hopefully it's enough to be able to get the ember stuff started and then I can actually melt down the other ore. Then it won't be a big deal. So yeah, um... <laughs> That's about where I am. That sounds like a horrible beast. I think it's just an alligator sound playing. There, there aren't actually alligators. Also, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to become a vegetarian. Boop. I needed meat at the very early game because it's a really quick way to get a bunch of food, but now I've collected a bunch of things from both just in the world generally, but especially from a village. So villages are things that appear on the map kind of just randomly, and they have pre-built buildings and they have villagers around them that they don't really do much. The villagers are mostly useless, but they do have farms. So there, there were a bunch of farms that had, uh, this is the food one, that had tons of uh, grass, which gives me seeds and wheat. You can use that to make bread and stuff. Had a bunch of carrots. Um, no potatoes, which is actually kind of surprising. Potatoes are pretty common, but I did also find beetroot. So as you can see, I have this. Whoops. I can eat that. I can eat that. I can eat all of these. So I've got plenty of vegetables to eat. And what I'm actually going to do right now, just to make sure I don't run out in the immediate future of food, I'm going to make a little farm. So wherever you're going to do your planting, you're going to want it to be on a dirt block and pretty close to water so that the water can saturate the dirt. So instead of actually building out a farming platform into the sea or something like that, I'm just going to use the shore. So let's do some tilling. Whoops. And then I'm just going to plant as much as I can. All right, now we've got a pretty large farm that should really make us pretty set for food. Don't think there's any chance of us running out now. Got all sorts of things, got uh, sugar cane, which is actually not planted on dirt. 
It just needs to be planted next to water on a sand block. So I've got the sugar cane, rice, a bunch of seeds to make wheat, beetroot, carrots, and melon seeds. So a pretty good spread of stuff, and you might have noticed when I was tilling the earth a bunch of these worms kept coming out. That's from the Actually Additions mod, but they're super helpful. You can place them on the dirt, like, um, oh. Can you plant one where it is? Huh, that's weird. So yeah, you have to break it and then place the worm, and then you can plant something back where it came from. Uh, strange, but anyway, yeah, the worm does two things. One thing is it makes sure that the ground stays saturated, even if you're not near water. And it also provides a slight bonus to the growth rate. And I think it does it in like a... Hmm. It's either like a... I think it's a 3x3. Three three. I think it does it to all the ones directly around it, I want to say. So I'll just place it along here. I'm not even going to bother replanting. I've got plenty. Plenty of things planted. Yeah, so we are definitely not going to run out of food now. I've started grinding up some ore in the grindstone. Some iron and some copper, and it's really slow, and you also have to do it manually. So I was thinking, is there a way to automate it? And I think there actually might be. There's a thing called a mechanical user, which... Um, I haven't actually used the mechanical user. I've used something called an autonomous activator, which I think is pretty similar. Basically, it acts like a person and is able to click on things. So I might be able to make it, and then it could click on it for me, and then I could do other stuff. And I think I have all the stuff, too. Actually, I'm sure I have all the stuff. I have the resonating redstone crystal. I got it somewhere when I was mining. Don't really know how or what I got it from, but hey, I got it. Just need to make a dropper, which is just cobblestone and redstone. I have that. Easy. Got all those made. Hopefully this thing doesn't require power. I don't think it does. Generic click. Right click. Um, does this require, like, coal or something? How do I make this thing go? Always on. No, just generic click. That is facing the right way, right? I'm pretty sure it is. But just in case, let me try placing it the other way. Whoops. Yeah, that's definitely the back. Unfortunately, it seems that the quartz grindstone is specifically made to disable any attempts to automate it, since it's meant to just be a super early game kind of thing, and there's uh, powered alternatives to do something like this. So, unfortunately, the mechanical user does not work for this. Hey, I've got 13 more, sweet. Um, anyway, so I've got some iron dust, which means we can actually complete our first quest. Three onion hamburgers. Nice. Unfortunately, that has meat. Also, I think we've already completed another one. Yeah, since we made this portal to the mining dimension, that is already done. So we get some more iron, some gold, and we get our pick of either diamond ore or emerald ore. Diamond is probably more useful. So what's next? Make, uh, have a bunch of bucket, buckets of a bunch of things. Empty one and a water one and a lava bucket and milk. E each bucket takes three iron to make. So it's actually a lot of iron given how little I have. Probably won't make that just yet. CF powder, I'll get into that in a bit. In the meantime, um, I guess I'm just gonna keep making copper. All right, I've just fried up some copper ingots. Starting to fry up the iron dust now. And I've taken a look at some of the different pathways we can take to progress on, and it looks like the major thing that's stopping our progress at the moment is I need to make a Tinker's Smeltry. So I'll explain all about what that is, but 
I suppose it's easier just to show you. So to start with, we need to make a bunch of grout. Grout can be turned into seared brick, and that brick can be turned into all the parts we need to make the smeltery. So we need a bunch of gravel, a bunch of sand, and a bunch of clay, which I have. Let's go ahead and make a crap ton. Um, what did I run out of? Gravel? Yeah, I ran out of gravel. I think that's... well, that's not quite all the gravel. Let's make as much as I can. Got a little bit of iron. I'll just keep that like that for now. So I'm just gonna fry up all this grout. It's gonna take quite a while. So we can do some other stuff while I'm waiting. Um, one of the things I'm going to need for the Tinker Smeltery is basically... It's, well, it's a smeltery, so it's a thing where you can melt metals and also some other things inside of it, and you can cast them into all sorts of different things. But to melt it, we're going to need heat, and for heat, we're going to need to fill a tank with lava. To do that, we're going to need a bucket. So let's go ahead and make a bucket and go get some lava. Wait, don't... Oh, crap. Don't tell me they changed the recipe for the bucket, didn't they? Is it, um... Ah, it's plates. It's not ingots. Which we can't make yet. We can't make plates yet until we do quite a few other things, so we need to go with the alternative recipe. Which is tin and camonite. Okay, well, um, I believe we do have tin ore, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there we go. So, I'll, oh, I, I can't cook that up directly, I've got to grind it. Okay, I've got a couple more things to do. Alright, so the tin to make the bucket is done, but I still need the Kamenite bricks, and to make Kamenite bricks, I need to make... Um, Kamenite blend. I only have enough to make eight, eight bricks, but that'll be enough. So that's great, but obviously a blend is not a brick. <laughs> um, so that thing's wet. We need to put it on a drying rack which is made with oak, wooks, oak wood slabs. Which is made like this. Let's make a whole bunch of drying racks. Oops. Oh, that's not a whole bunch. Let's make more. Much better. So let's go put this out to dry. <laughs> it's raining outside. Can they dry in the rain? I don't know if it detects that. Uh, it looks like... Yeah, this is covered. This'll do. So we just get those, give those a bit of time, and they should turn into bricks. So waiting on that. In the meantime, um, I guess I'm mostly just waiting for more seared bricks. I'm gonna get back to grinding. Let's go see if our Camnite blend has dried, so we can make a bucket. Aha! It has. Okay, um, what was it for a bucket? I think it was... No, that's not right. No, that's not right either. <laughs> okay. Aha! Uh -huh. Should I make two? Yeah, I'm gonna make two. Alright, so I need to fill that with lava at some point before the smeltery will work, but before I do that, let's actually make the smeltery. So we have a bunch of seared bricks that we made from cooking grout. Let's turn this into a whole bunch of seared bricks. That should be enough. I think that'll be enough seared bricks. So in addition to seared bricks, that's basically the basic building block of the smeltery, but we also need a couple things that are kind of special. Uh, let's see if I can remember how to make them. Oh, that's for a casting basin. Yeah, sure, I'll make one of those. Might need that. Um, let's actually do tinkers. Holy crap, there's ten pages of items. Well, I know we need a controller. 
Oh, <laughs> that's gonna use up one of my buckets, okay. So that's kind of the heart of it. But we're also going to need a tank. Wait, tank controller. Did I make the right thing? That might not actually be the right thing. Hmm. Well, I seem to have run into a bit of a problem. I'll show you in just a second. I'll make everything except the thing that's a problem. So, I, yeah, I did make the wrong item. I made Tinker Tank Controller, but what I think I need to make is the Smeltry Controller. And that's going to be the problem thing. Because that takes an Iron Furnace. Which takes a furnace, that's easy, but also iron plates, which I don't believe I can make yet? I'm a little bit confused about this. I might have to make ember stuff before I can make this. Um, yeah. But a couple other things I also need. I need a smeltery drain that allows me to get fluids kind of in and out of it. Let's grab a couple of those. I also need the thing that takes lava inside of it. That allows me to melt stuff. And I also need a casting table. And it looks like I'm out of seared bricks. So let's build this thing. It sands the controller that makes it actually work. <laughs> I'm impatient, I just want to get it done. Let's just do it. So it's a pretty freeform thing. You can make it almost any size you want. But I think pretty common. I hope I have enough bricks for this. Uh, okay, I don't... Yeah, I don't have enough bricks to make the 3x3 uh, three three size. Let's do 2x2, two two, I guess. Ah, it's gonna be pathetically small. It's alright, we'll live. So just like the portal, you don't have to actually do the corners. So I can build this up just by doing this and ignoring that block down there. You could put it there if you want, but if you're trying to save resources, like me, you don't have to do it. Let's put a tank right... Right here. Let's say this is where the controller would go. And then we can actually replace these blocks with whatever special blocks we want. So, for example, I want two drains here. So the drains would pour into, for example, a casting table and into a casting basin. Yeah, I'm missing a couple things still, aside from the controller. But this is pretty much it. At this point, I, if I put the controller right here, I could actually use this thing. It's very small, but it would work. But as you just saw, that's not going to work because I can't make the controller. Just to be sure, I can't put this here, right? No. Alright, let me figure out what to do. Basically, I'm not exactly certain how to progress, but I do know that one of the things I definitely do need is more Kamenite Blend to make more buckets. Um, and to do that, I need more bones. And to get bones, I need to kill some skeletons. So, let's go out. I'm gonna light up my base here. Go out into the dark, dark night. Oh yeah, how's our... Oh man, <laughs> look at that, everything is grown. Okay, well before we head out, let's go ahead and harvest. <gasps> you aren't grown, why? Okay, so not everything's grown, but like 95% of stuff is grown. Oh, so satisfying. I shall not want for food. Thank you, Wormies, for helping it all along. I think an axe makes these faster, right? Yeah. Oh, crap. Broke the melon itself. The stock. Stock. 
I'm gonna replant you. Alright, so how much food do we get from that one harvest? Like, almost a stack of carrots, 15 beetroots, 34 wheat. Man, that is awesome. Yeah, I think... I think you can turn it into wheat flour, and then I think you can... If I remember right, I think you can directly bake the wheat flour into bread. I'm tempted to do that right now, but no. I came out here with a purpose. Let's find skeletons. Well, I almost died. I managed to get two bones. I killed one skeleton and got two bones. Which, when you grind it up, gives you... Eight bone meal. Which is nice, but I want more, and I also realized that I am seriously squishy. So I'm going to do a couple things about that. One is I'm going to get some more nutritious food. Just eating simple things like carrots and watermelons and stuff. Um, it doesn't restore much health, which means during combat... Um, well, let me back up for a second. When you take damage to heal back, you pretty much have to be almost full on food. So if you eat food that isn't very nutritious, it doesn't overfill you very much. And so when you get hurt after healing just maybe a couple hearts, your food... Go, your hunger goes down enough that you stop healing. So it's actually very bad even during combat. You really want to be regening constantly during combat. So I want to eat food that restores more. So I messed around and there's two kinds of bread. There's bread and then baguette. I mean I'm sure there's more types of bread but uh, the bread you make by turning wheat directly into wheat flour and then you bake that and it makes normal bread vanilla bread. By vanilla I mean normal Minecraft non-modded bread. Um, but you can also make baguettes by taking two wheats and putting them like this and it turns into not wheat flour but dough somehow even without using water it's really quite mysterious but somehow you make a dry dough and then you bake it and it turns into baguettes which I'm pretty sure are more nutritious than normal bread. In fact we can actually compare if you mouse over this, you can see at the bottom right of that little info panel, it restores three three normal food and also three... Uh, I'm not going to explain what the other ones are. It's weird. It's called saturation. It's kind of like overfilling. You want saturation because it overfills you. It's good. So three normal, three saturation. This is two and a half and three saturation. So yeah, baguette is a little bit better. All right, so that's an improvement over just pure carrots. Also, another thing I can do is make a little bit of armor. Not much. I don't have access to, like, I definitely don't have the resources to make iron armor or anything of the sort, but I can make a leather tunic. Which will at least give me something. Emphasis on something. One and a half things of armor. It's not much, but it's something. All right, back out to it. Oh, it's daytime now. Oh, creeper. Ugh. Yeah, some sort of a mod is making it so that they turn invisible when they start to sizzle. I've never seen that before, it's interesting. All right, well, no more skeletons for today. And it's raining. Let's make some more Kamenite. Let's try to do this quest. So I need four types of fluids, or bucket. Four types of bucket, I guess, because one is empty and has no fluid. The other ones are water, lava, and milk. So I got enough Kamenite to make all the buckets. Let's fill them up. Water is going to be easy, of course. Lava, I'm going to have to go pretty deep underground to try to find that. And milk, I can get from a cow. And I think I know where cows are. I think there's somewhere... If I go, if I go along the coast that way, I think I'll run into some cows. Alright, we got the water. Here's some lava. Oh, I think that's a cow I see. Yep. Hello, friend. Oop. Now we got some milk. Let's go out to sea before I open up the quest book. I don't want to die. Okay. 
Oh, uh, manual detect. There we go. So we're going to get liquid sunshine bucket. I have no idea what to do with that. Probably nothing. And pick from either bucket of blood or molten iron bucket. Uh, I'll take the molten iron, thanks. So that opens up the squeezer. Using a forestry squeezer should allow you to make enough seed oil to inefficiently produce some creosote for an engineering or IC2 hammer to make plates. Okay, so this is kind of the next thing we need to do. Yeah, because we need to be able to make plates to make pretty much anything. And we need creosote oil to make... To make the, um... The treated wood, which will allow us to make that. I thought I looked at the recipe for the squeezer, though, and I thought it was something I just couldn't make. Oh god, the zombie's slowly coming for me. Mobs can swim. Very, very, very slowly. So let's take a look at that recipe for the squeezer again, because apparently there was something I was missing. Oh man, crops are pretty much ready to harvest again. I'm going to wait on that, though. So, squeezer. Okay, tin, we can do that. Glass, we can do that. Sturdy casing. See, how the hell am I supposed to make this? Oh, wait, there's another recipe for it. I didn't even look at this one. Lava bucket, we can do that. Copper gear, basic gear, we can... Okay, we can do that. So, check, check, check. Yeah, we... Okay, yeah, that's how you're supposed to make it. I didn't even look down and see that there was another version of it. Alright, so that's how we move forwards. Alright, I think I've got the stuff together to make the squeezer. I had to go mining again in the mining dimension to get more tin, because you need a whole bunch of it to make it. So, let's take a look. Let's make this first. So we need four hardened clay. I got that already. Lava bucket, already got that. I need two tin gears and two copper gears, which means I'm going to need four basic gears. Two, three, four, and I think for the clockwork engine which I need to make to power this thing, I think I need an additional gear, so I'll make a fifth one. So I get that, I need two... Uh, what was it again? Two tin, two copper. Actually, I need an additional copper one for the clockwork engine, so I'll just make that right now. There's that. Okay, so that's everything to make that. Oh, wait. Oh, I haven't gotten the hardened clay. I've got that right here. Um, for that, you just turn... You turn these clay things that you get from breaking clay blocks into this, which makes the original clay block, and then you bake that in an oven, and then you get the hardened clay. So now we have everything to make that. Oh, it doesn't even use up the bucket, it just uses up the lava. Good. Now I got everything but the glass. Should have that somewhere. There we go. Got a squeezer. Okay, clockwork engine. So I've already got the gear. Stone I can get. I need a redstone repeater and weighted pressure plate. Two weighted pressure plates. Here's the stone. Two weighted pressure plates made out of gold. There we go. And redstone repeater. Stone, redstone, torch, redstone. Already got it. Alright, there we go. We have a clockwork engine and a squeezer. And I believe we're going to need to squeeze seeds. Let's start putting stuff on the overworld. I've lighted the stuff up enough that way I should get mobs that are going to try to attack me up here as long as I stay in the center. And there's a lot more room. The start of an empire. Put some seeds in there. So I think 
Yeah, so we just keep hitting this until it basically goes to the max power. Which seems to be that, and then we let it go, and then it generates power. Very, very slowly. Oh, I can't wait till we have proper power generation. But that's enough to make a little bit... Oh my god, that is terrible. So one seed becomes 10 millibuckets. We need a thousand millibuckets to make an actual bucket of creosote oil. Or seed oil, as I guess it is in this case. Which means if you do the math, we're gonna need a hundred seeds. Just to make one bucket. Whew. Okay, we uh, we need more seeds. Thankfully we can get that quite easily. Let's do a harvest. I don't know if I'll get a hundred right now, but I'll get a decent amount. Hmm, well, at least I haven't grown all the way. I'm not going to bother with the melons. Probably shouldn't even bother with the carrots. Oh, out of room. So how many did we get? 24. Hmm. You know what? I'm actually going to plant them. Rather than feed them back into the machine, it seems like I just need more. So I'm going to plant. I'm going to expand the farm. We finally have enough seed oil. Oh, that took forever. I just AFK'd and did some baking while I was waiting for this to process, and also waiting for the seeds to grow. Okay. Don't interrupt me. This is going to change our life. Seed oil bucket. So that is going to allow me to make treated planks, which will allow me to make treated sticks, which will allow me to make the hammer, which will allow me to make plates, which will allow me to make pretty much everything. Asshole. Uh, but one little thing I need for the engineer's hammer, very, very small, is an industrial hemp fiber. It's easy enough, I can just plant one, I can use bone meal to force it to grow. Oh, thank god, it took four whole bone meals just to make it grow. Um, oh, I don't think this... yeah, uh, most crops you can just right-click to harvest them. But I don't think that works this way, I think this one you have to left-click, yes. And just the top, if you do the bottom you break the whole thing. Yeah, so there's a couple hemp fibers. And, you know, I'm probably going to need more of this stuff, so... Um, I'll just knock out some beets. Alright, let's go make a hammer. I'm going to be very conservative with what I make with the treated wood. Because if I run out of it and I have to make another bucket full of that stuff... Oh my god. So it should be that plus planks, right? Mm. How do I make you? I'm a little bit worried. I mean, I know that you normally make it with creosote, but I assume they added a recipe in that makes it work with seed oil, but it looks like they didn't? I Wait. That doesn't make any sense, though. I'm pretty sure the guy tells you to do that. Using a forestry squeezer should allow you to make enough seed oil to inefficiently produce some creosote for an engineering or IC2 hammer to make plates. Seed oil to produce creosote. So, how do I make... If you don't use the seed oil as creosote, then how do I turn it into creosote? Oh, okay. You just... Use uh, it plus coal, turns it into creosote. Oh, thank god. <laughs> I thought maybe I had to use like a different type of seed or something to squeeze. And that's a handy feature, by the way, of... Um, it's called Just Enough Items, is this whole like search interface. It doesn't just allow you to search for individual items and look at how they're made, uh, but it also allows you to look at how things are used. So, for example, if I uh, mouse over the seed oil bucket and press U, U shows me the uses for it, so what recipes is the seed oil bucket used in. 
So like, what can I craft with it? Craft a creosote and a bottler. I can make a empty bucket fluid tank. I can make an empty bucket. So it is super useful. Yeah, you can both see what the recipe is to make it by pressing R and U to see what is used in. Do I actually have any coal? I have like fancy coal, but do I have any normal coal, which is what it takes for the recipe? I actually don't. Well, that's awkward. Okay, finally got it. Took way longer than it should have. Creosote! That's odd, I've never seen that before. And with that, now we can finally make the wood plank thing. There we go. Eight treated wood planks. It's a truly beautiful sight. Actually, before I do that, let me just make sure I'm making the exact right amount. So I'm trying to make the engineer's hammer two sticks. Just two sticks. Four sticks is fine. Oh, I accidentally put away my plant fiber. Ah. Oh. oh, this thing is so beautiful. Do you know what we can do with that? We can make plates. Hammer plus whatever you want to make a plate out of equals plate. Cop plate. I can, make, can I make Kamenite plates? No, it doesn't exist. Freaking tin, tin plates don't exist either. Okay, well, iron plates. Iron plates! And it does use up the durability, by the way, every time you make a plate. So this does have limited uses, but um, it should last for quite a while. And I have enough treated wood planks to make a bunch of these, actually. Let's see, for every two, I can make two. So I can make eight. I can make eight hammers. <laughs> that should be enough. All right, let's see where to go from here. I was thinking we'd be able to get the Tinker Smeltery going now that I can make plates, but it turns out I don't think I can. That's a little bit further in the future. I think the next thing I want to do is make the Coke Oven. With the Coke Oven, I think I'd be able to make the Tinker Smeltery. Um, to make the Coke Oven, though, I need to go to the Nether and collect some things, and to get to the Nether, I need to make a Nether Portal, which the biggest thing that I need for that is Obsidian. And to be able to mine obsidian, I need a diamond pickaxe. So I'm going to have to use three of my precious diamonds to make a diamond pickaxe and go get some obsidian. Beautiful. Also, I should probably claim some quest rewards. So I made the squeezer and the clockwork engine. I get an apiarist's backpack, a scoop, and my choice of a type of hive. I don't really plan on getting into bees, certainly not anytime soon, so I'm probably just going to stuff this stuff away, but yeah, there's a whole bee system inside of the forestry mod. You can raise bees, you can have them pollinate, you can have them, uh, depending on the type of bee, they produce different kinds of materials. Don't really know what kind to go for. I don't know, tropical? Just dump that away. I think... Yeah, let's also do this one. Five iron plates. I can do that easily. Get a redstone gear and... A seed. Let's go with a soybean seed. Soybeans are very useful. And also, I think they'll allow me to get protein as a... Uh, playing as a vegetarian character, it should allow me to get protein, assuming... Assuming protein has been appropriately applied to soybean stuff. Hopefully it has. I, I think it has. I'm pretty sure all the Pan's Harvest Graft food stuff has been properly assigned. And when I talk about nutrition, by the way, I should probably mention what the heck I'm talking about, right? So there's this mod called, well, Nutrition, which gives you the kind of basic food groups. And depending on how balanced your nutrition is depends on, uh, decides whether you get bonuses or negatives. I believe if your nutrition gets really bad, you get negatives applied to you, and if your nutrition is really good, you get some bonuses. So you can see right now it's mostly protein, 
because that's what I ate for the beginning of the game, and then quite a bit of vegetables because that's what I've been eating since then. But my dairy and grain is pretty poor. Unfortunately, the baguettes that I've been eating do not count towards grain because those haven't been properly integrated into the mod. So I should maybe switch over to eating this bread. You can see it says grain, 2.5%. And this doesn't have that, so bye-bye baguettes. I need my greens. And the nutrition mod is actually a modification that I added to this, well, <laughs> mod pack. Originally, this mod pack has a mod called Spice of Life. And it's a mod that I absolutely detest. I've never enjoyed it. It's, uh, it forces you to eat a variety of foods. Which is kind of a good thing. Because normally, if you're playing without any sort of a food overhaul mod in Minecraft, you can basically just eat bread for the rest of your life. You can just make one crop and it really doesn't matter. So I get why they try to force you to use different kinds and actually have some sort of a variety to your farm. But the way they do that, the way they enforce that variety is they make it so you basically you get diminishing returns if you keep eating the same sort of food. So it keeps a list of like the past five or 10 or 20 or however many it's assigned of uh, the past foods that you've eaten. And then basically if, let's say you eat bread once and then you go to eat it again, it's already on your list of like the past five foods you've eaten. It'll give you, it'll be like harder to eat. I think it gives you less, yeah, it gives you less nutrients so it doesn't heal as much. And then eventually it usually gets to the point where you literally can't eat it. If you've eaten like too much bread, you literally won't be able to consume it. It just becomes useless. And I hate that. It's so ridiculous. The idea that you could be starving and literally just won't refuse to eat something just because you've had too much of it. It's like, oh, well, I'm sick of bread. I guess I'll starve to death. So I replaced it with a mod called Nutrition. I think this is much more interesting. It enforces variety through bonuses or negatives, but not through just straight up making it so you can't eat or something ridiculous like that. Anyway, um, I need to go get obsidian. I'm also going to need to get some lava. And I think that's it, so I'll be right back. Alright, I've got the 10 obsidian that I should need to make the portal. So we're going to have to make the portal in a bit of a strange way. It's made just like the aroma mining dimension, the same shape. Except instead of using the mining tool to activate it, you have to use fire. Normally the way you do that is with flint and steel. However, we don't have steel and we don't have any way to make it. So we're going to have to use a trick that I've never done before. And that's lighting a log on fire to make fire. With lava. So the nether portal is kind of loud, so I'm going to put it a little bit away from the base. That should do it, so let's put it... I guess it... Where do I put the log exactly? Just right next to it, hopefully. Let's put something for the lava to be inside of. It should catch on fire at some point. It might take it some time. I think it's going to take it some time. It's kind of random when the lava decides to actually catch something on fire. Aha! There we go. Took a while. It looks like the uh, wood actually has to be on the same level like this. And for some reason, the lava really did not want to light those logs on fire until I actually put it above the logs instead of next to it. But finally, it's worked. Alright. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to hell and I'm dragging you with me.